Hey, welcome to week two of Explore the Bible. We continue in the book of Luke and uh, looking forward to what we're going to read today as we're really getting the Christmas story here and uh, the, the background we had last week with uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth and the uh, uh, John the Baptist being conceived. And now we come to uh, the story of Mary and how Mary finds out and what happens in her life. So let's dive right into Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Now I know many of you know this story well already. Uh, this is a familiar passage. We've seen, we've read it maybe year after year after year uh, around the Christmas time. And so we're not going to try to go through everything in it, but I just want to point out a, a few things to you that I think are important for us to remember. First of all, it's Gabriel. He's back. He was here in, earlier in chapter one in his dealings with Zechariah. He has come now again to um, Mary to talk to her and one thing that is different that stands out right off the bat, he does not say right off the bat, do not be afraid. He says, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Okay, so it's a different greeting than we have for anywhere else and any, any other time pretty much that, a, that an angel shows up, this greeting. And, he, and uh, he says to her, first, you are a favored woman. She's favored um, because the Lord is about to do something. That's his favor is upon her. But I think it's not, it's not a stretch to think that she was a woman who was seeking and, and doing her best to be obedient to the Lord. She was following what the Lord wanted her to do. That's why the Lord chose her, right? So, so he's not going to choose someone for a great job who is not already actively obedient and trying to be obedient to the Lord, right? It's kind of like in church. You don't choose people to do things in an effort to try to get them involved. Well, you know, this guy never comes to church. Why don't we make him a Sunday school teacher? Then he'll have to come. Terrible idea, right? That's not what you do, okay? So, so she's chosen because she's already being obedient to the Lord. And then this statement, the Lord is with you, which is a statement of, uh, has a lot of things to think about in it, okay? Number one, it's a statement of comfort. God is with you, right? The Lord is with you. It's a statement of fact. The Lord is with you. We can see that in your life. The Lord is with you, right? It's a statement of encouragement. You need to know the Lord is with you. The Lord's with you. It's a statement of the current reality as Gabriel shows up. He is the representative of the Lord. The Lord is with you. We're here, right? The Lord is here right now. Okay, so this this important that she understands and we understand what's going on here. Okay, the Lord is with her. So he says, now listen, which he said to Zechariah too, listen, but he, did, he had to kind of work to get there with Zechariah. But he tells her what's about to happen. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. You think about the parallels that happen here with the word that came to Zechariah and the word that come to, to Mary, Okay. Uh, Zechariah, your wife, Elizabeth, will conceive, will bear a son. They will name him John. Here, you will conceive, give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Think about what these statements are, how revolutionary these statements are to make about anyone ever born anywhere, anytime. Okay, we, we know the rest of the story, so we often don't appreciate the magnitude of these statements when they are made. He says, he will be great. Well, every mother thinks their child is great. But listen, he will be called the son of the most high. Who's the most high? The most high is God, right? God Almighty, he will be the son of God Almighty. He will be the son of the God who is above all. And there's clearly here a different quality to this and not just saying, well, he's the son of God, you know, like we're all children of God. Clearly there's a difference here, right? He will be called the son of the most high. And we know that that comes up here in a little bit where we kind of see more fleshing out of that. Okay. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Well, his father's not David, but his ancestors, David, right? He will get, he will have the throne of his father, David. Well, David was the king of Israel. 
So your child's going to be the king of Israel, but Israel's under rule of Rome. How will my child be the king of Israel when Israel's really no longer even in existence in a sense? It's, it's as much an idea as it is anything, right? This, this is a, quite a statement that he will reign over the house of Jacob, which is talking about Israel again, forever. He will reign forever and his kingdom will have no end, which doesn't just mean end in time, but means end in space. His kingdom will expand all over and it will last forever. This is, what, this is who is going to be born to you. This is your child. You go back and you think about what was said to Zechariah about his son, the great things he would do, right, in helping turn people back to the Lord. But now look at this. What Mary's told is, your child is going to be the son of the Most High God, and he will take over the house of, of David. He will reign over Israel forever and ever. It will grow. It will have no limits. Wow. How's she supposed to take that in? How's she supposed to process all of that? Right? This is an incredible statement about who Jesus is and who he will be known as. Okay? This is not just, hey, you're going to have a baby. This is, this is something amazing, right? Beyond, this is mind-blowing. And, it, and it's really hard for us now. We look back and we, well, we've read this over and over and we know all about Jesus' life and death, burial, resurrection. And so we can see it. Mary had none of that, right? She's none of that. Mary asked the angel, how can this be since I have not had sexual relations with a man? Okay. Now I just want to point out to you, her question is about how am I going to have a child when I've never had sex? Okay, her question is not, how is he going to be the king over a whole nation that doesn't exist anymore? How is he going to be the king over a nation that's not going to have any limits? How is he going to be the son of God? How's that supposed to work? What's that about? You know, I mean, there are so many questions to ask her, but she gets right to the, to, to the very base question, how am I even going to have a child? Much less him be all of this. How, how can I even have a child? Uh, the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Okay, the angel doesn't really give her um, the answer that, that some people might want. Okay, some people want, well, how did that happen? They want to know the whole logistics and the mechanics. But he's saying, look, here's what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit is going to descend on your life. God is going to be, you see what we've got, the Holy Spirit, we've got the Most High, and we've got the Son of God. We've got the Trinity all right here, right? God is going to come on your life, and you're going to become pregnant. That's all I can tell you. And that child will be the Son of God. He will be called the Son of God, not a Son of God, not one of the sons of God. He will be the Son of God. That's who he will be. It's all we get. You're just going to have to be content with that, okay? If, if you need more answers to that, well, you're not going to get them because they don't exist. God who spoke the world in existence, God who created everything out of nothing, can declare that Mary is pregnant with his child, and she is. And, and it just happens. He comes on, comes over her, overshadows her, right? And she's pregnant with the Son of God. And then, for, for validation for her, right? Consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called childless, for nothing will be impossible with God. Okay, this is why it's important that you have that story about Elizabeth first, right? So you, there's context and understanding about the words that come to Mary. But she has had a, uh, conceived a child, and she's in the sixth month. Remember that Mary Elizabeth gets pregnant and doesn't tell anybody for five months. And, and it's, you know, probably if Mary knows, right, if she's aware of it, she's only known for a few weeks now about this. And yet um, when she hears this, then it's, well, God was involved in that because he's known it's six months, you know, 
Um, and of course, she was considered childless. She was considered past childbearing age and had had no children. Nothing is impossible with God. Okay, in essence to say, look, look at what happened to Elizabeth. God's got this, okay? There's nothing impossible with him. He can do anything. He is almighty God. He can do this. And she says her response, this classic great response, the, the absolutely apt, perfect response to have when the Lord calls you, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. Very different from from Zechariah, who was, a, who was a priest in the temple. Mary's a teenager, right, out in the field or something. Zechariah, the priest in the temple, says, that ain't going to happen. You, are you crazy? Mary says, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm the Lord's servant. Whatever he wants to do, I'm good. Right? Um, hey, look, sometimes, sometimes... Um, it is that innocence of the child, right? The trusting of the child. We've talked about that before, that that innocence means that not just that they haven't done any wrong, not, not that necessarily, but that willingness to trust, willingness to do whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. I believe that whatever you say is going to be right. Sometimes um, our age, um, our experience, um, our uh, human wisdom gets in our way of being obedient to the Lord and following him. Mary didn't let that happen. You know, she didn't have that problem. She was ready to go. Joseph, he, he had questions, you know, read Matthew. Joseph had questions. Mary, okay, Lord, whatever you want to do. She was ready to go. What a great example, right? What a great example. Thanks for watching. I hope this has helped. Hope you have a great uh, Bible study time and teaching. God bless you as you do that. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, subscribe. You'll get notices every week when the videos go up as we go through the Gospel of Luke this quarter. All right, we'll see you next time.